how humans have a lot of empathy and can still go absolutely brutal causing genocides and mass murders how humans can go about donating their entire wealth like oscar schindler to save just one more jew and still putting a whole race under the threat of extinction did you ever wonder how humans can show this wide spectrum of emotions from being the most empathetic species to the most brutal species on this planet we didn't either until we read this book by david eagleman the brain the story of you this is essentially a book for anyone who is interested in neuroscience and wants to understand the functioning of a human brain in a very simple language and how small movements in your brain pulses impact your social interactions and everything else one of the most interesting part of this book is when it tries to explain the concept of empathy how humans have a lot of empathy and can still go absolutely brutal causing genocide and mass murders how humans can go about donating their entire wealth like oscar schindler to save just one more jew and still putting a whole race under the threat of extinction let's talk about it in this video the discussion in this video will need us to explain some psychological and some neurological phenomenon but we'll try explaining everything in the simplest way possible giving you no reason to click out of this video and here we go the first thing we need to understand is the concept of mirroring Now to those of you who know about it it would look like what has mirroring got to do with empathy and brutality and genocide and etc etc but allow us to explain the concept first and then we'll link it to the larger picture as we zoom out for you Did you ever find yourself smiling at someone when they are smiling right at you or find yourself frowning at someone when someone else is frowning at you or just pointing a middle finger to someone when they are pointing right at you Well the first two are the examples of mirroring and third one is just uh, it's just uh, it's 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 justice ting 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 mirroring you see is a very subtle and subconscious process it happens you wouldn't even know that it happened even if i show you a picture of smiling person right now your facial expression would change with a very subtle muscle movements something that you would totally miss but scientists don't They attach delicate machines that can detect slightest of your facial muscle movements and have established mirroring as something that you do all the time. But let's ask the most eternal human question at this point. What the fuck does she want? I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Why does does mirroring serve a purpose? Well, it does serve a huge purpose from an evolutionary perspective. Now evolution wants you to survive and to be able to do that You need to be able to anticipate the future to some extent. Now, for example, the caveman in front of you is more likely to attack you if he is angry and less likely if he is happy. So, if you can just know how he is feeling, angry or happy, you can anticipate what he might do the next moment. But how can you know? You look at his expressions. If he is smiling, he is probably happy and if he is frowning, he is probably angry. So you look at his facial expressions and you see that he is smiling. So you figure out that he is probably happy and hence you are safe around him. But how did you do that? How did you conclude that he is happy from the fact that he was smiling? You might be thinking it's so simple. I just read his expressions, but that's not how the brain works. You didn't directly see that he was smiling. You just saw an expression in his face. What happens after that is a different story. When you see an expression in someone's face, you mirror the expression subconsciously. you put on the same expression and through your own expressions your brain figures out oh this expression corresponds to the feeling of happiness and that's how you know that the person is probably happy through your expressions that you have just mirrored from him and that's the evolutionary significance of mirroring but it's not limited to the expressions it goes far beyond it goes to the feeling of pain and joy In fact, mirroring is how you get so involved in a movie or a book to be able to feel what our protagonist is feeling. For example, when you see someone getting stabbed in a movie, your own pain matrix inside your brain gets partially triggered. To understand what a pain matrix is, let's try to see how the brain functions. Brain works in neurological patterns. Now imagine brain as a huge grid of light bulbs where every emotion, memory and experience is associated with a particular pattern of lit bulbs. For instance the emotion of pain is also associated with a particular pattern called the pain matrix and similarly the emotion of joy is associated with another 
Now, coming back to our main point, when you see someone getting stabbed in a movie, your own pain matrix inside your brain gets partially triggered, partially because only the emotional experience of pain can be felt and not the physical one. And this is how you feel other people's pain. This is how you participate in their grief because your brain mirrors even the neural network activity inside it. The fact that your pain matrix gets triggered when you see someone else in pain establishes the concept of empathy inside you. See, ultimately, it's the same concept of mirroring that helps us understand empathy in humans. Now back to our main question. If empathy is so deeply wired in human biology, then how can we ever be convinced to cause genocides and holocausts? To understand this, we'll need to make one more small diversion. Allow us to introduce the concept of groups. So we talked about evolution and survival. Now one more thing to be established about survival at this point is that it's more likely for us to survive in a group than it is for us to survive individually. Say the two of us are cavemen and I am really good at making my shelter but not that good at hunting food and you happen to be really good at hunting but absolutely suck at making shelter. Now if we try to survive on our own individually then I'll probably die of hunger and you'll die of cold. But if we join forces, <laughs> then boy, we are unstoppable. So essentially, survival is easier in groups than individually. That established a very natural tendency of forming groups in humans. And that's how we have been able to survive and thrive. Because if you think about it, that is how the economy works. I am good at this, so let me do this for all of you. And you are good at that, so why don't you do that for all of us? But with this concept of groups comes the concept of in-group and out-group. For every in-group, there must exist various out-groups. And this is where the shit gets real, so pay attention. It has been proven empirically that our pain matrix is more sensitive towards people inside our group and less sensitive for people outside it. So for instance, if you see someone in your group get hurt, your pain matrix will be triggered to quite an extent. But if you see someone out of your group hurt, Pain matrix doesn't really have many fucks to give about it. And that's how ladies and gents, your brain can shut the empathy towards others by merely declaring them as outgroups. And that's how Nazis turned off their empathy towards the outgroup called Jews. That's how Ottomans turned off their empathy towards the outgroup of millions of Armenians in 1915. That's how the Japanese turned off their empathy towards the Chinese in the Nanking massacre of 1937. And that's how you turn off your empathy towards anyone you are not kind to by declaring them as outgroups. Schindler, on the other hand, saw humanity as a group and hence was able to keep his empathy towards millions of Jews that were being murdered by the Nazis. So next time when you are feeling proud about your group of any kind, don't put other people in gas chambers at least. And of course, subscribe to the channel please out of empathy at least.